You know, every now and again, I catch a comment or fall into a conversation about or overhear someone talking about how the current generation of automobiles is the worst of all time. With all this hybrid technology on its way in and the internal combustion engine on its way out, horsepower restrictions in favor of emissions, manufacturers setting dates that they will be going full electric by, and overall just lowering the displacement of gasoline engines until they're well gone. But I would argue that right now is actually gonna go down in history as one of the greatest automobile generations of all time. The Supra is back. The Civic's coming with 300 horsepower from the factory. We have a new Z coming out that looks like all of the old ones all together at the same time. A 395 horsepower STI. Modern naturally aspirated V8s and Mustangs and Camaros are just shy of 500 horsepower. And the final drive in the stake, you cannot convince me that there is a lack of enthusiast cars when you can just go buy a 700 horsepower sedan for four Grand. Never in the history of ever has there ever been a better deal on horsepower, ever. And so I started thinking, what exactly is that cost of horsepower on the cheapest used Hellcat in the USA? And are there other cars out there that can even get close to a fucking Hellcat? And certainly there's not even the slimmest chance that there are any cars out there that you can get for just $5,000 to compete with the Hellcat's bargain on horsepower, let alone enough of them to make a whole goddamn video about, right? Well, go and grab your favorite snack because in just a few seconds, you're gonna have a sweet tooth. It doesn't make any sense. Let's get into the video. <laughs> All right, so you like your horsepower scooped up on a plate of value because you're a price conscious consumer who wants the most product for your hard earned money, right? And when that product is horsepower, it's not subject to a price difference based on quality because it's not actually a physical object. And so to me, that means it is simply and also infinitely more is always better. Right? Right. Okay, so now that we're on the same page and you understand how my freaking brain works, I'm gonna take you guys on one hell of a journey because right now I'm gonna show you guys my very own secret list of cars that have cheaper horsepower than the lowest priced Hellcat in the USA, which just so happens to be this gray 2016 Charger Hellcat that I found on Auto Tempest. Anyway, this bad mamma jam is gonna set you back just shy of $45,000 throw out that COVID 10% inflation for a $40,000 evaluation for the benefit of the doubt, divide that by 707 horsepower and you end up with a cost of $56.57 per, which you know really isn't that bad at all. But frankly, even the very first car we're gonna talk about blows the Hellcat out of the water with an $18 per horsepower price tag. The early fourth generation F body cars from General Motors are such good performers for the money that I cannot believe more people don't want them, which is good though, I guess, because that makes them cheap. Since most people much prefer the facelift LS1 versions of these cars, a 275 horsepower LT1 Camaro Trans Am Firebird formula can be found in honestly decent condition for about $5,000. Now I know 275 horsepower might sound like a ton, but for $5,000, you're gonna have a really hard time finding another 14 second car in this price range with the same reliability as a Chevy truck. And with just a couple really cheap bolt-ons, these cars are getting deep into the 13. But you know what doesn't have a big, huge V8, but beats out the LT1 power F body by almost two whole dollars per horsepower. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to one of the best sounding cars to ever hit the road. The 2004 to 2007 Volvo S60 or V70, but probably not R, the S16 V70R with this generation came with a 2.5 liter turbocharged five cylinder engine that made a muscle car embarrassing at the time, 300 horsepower. It was available with a six speed manual transmission. It was all wheel drive. It didn't take long for people to start throwing bolt-ons and ethanol at these cars and pick up 100 horsepower very easily and then take down cars way above its league. But now you can pick these things up for $5,000 all day. It probably won't be a cool color or be manual, but you know, they're not the easiest to find in manual, but for $5,000, you're only spending $16.60 per horsepower. That's not bad for mom's sedan. Now moving on to something a little bit less traditional. So imagine this for a moment. It's like 2005, right? The Mustang GT is 300 horsepower. The Camaro didn't exist yet. The S2000 had 240 horsepower. The PT Cruiser was still being built and the Chevrolet Impala had become a front wheel drive economy level sedan, as opposed to the Impala's V8 rear wheel drive luxury roots. However, the 2006 model year, you can now get that SS trim Impala that came with a 303 horsepower, 5.3 liter LS4 V8. Good for low 14s in the quarter mile, but fortunately for GM, these cars were littered with undesirables. First off, it's still front wheel drive, which is like, I mean, I get it. You can't just convert a front wheel drive chassis to rear wheel drive. 
I mean, you can, people do it all the time, but you get the damn point, all right? It just seems really weird to have a front wheel drive V8, anything, it's weird. How do you even build a solid front wheel drive trans that can handle that kind of torque? Well, to avoid making it way too expensive, they just decided to ignore that exact issue and pump these things out with glass transmission. It's genuinely ridiculous. Every single one has had a transmission replacement. Literally, anyone I've ever seen in my life. It's like Subaru is blowing up, it always happens. But these issues do make it one of the cheapest 300 horsepower cars that you can get into, even if the transmission does self-destruct with no warnings. Now when this next car came out, it made some big waves. 2009 Hyundai, which you now know for their value-focused luxury and sport-oriented cars, didn't have such a hot reputation. In fact, Hyundai basically stood for shitty, unreliable, hard to work on shit boxes that only people who finance cars to buy here pay for your lot drive because you only drive a Hyundai if you have to. The brand is Korean, which there's nothing inherently wrong with, but Korean products just aren't normalized here like Japanese and Canadian products are. Remember the Tiburon that Hyundai brought us? The only car in the history of ever to simultaneously make you puke in your mouth on site and make an atrocious sound and be extremely slow all at the same time. Tiburon. It literally had nothing going for it. But between then and today's more competitive version of Hyundai, they had to do something really crazy to break the stigma and gain the trust of the US market. And crazy they did. Hyundai was just like, blam, slapped their big throbbing idea right on the table with a 311 horsepower 3.8 liter V6. You know what else? It was rear wheel drive. It had a manual transmission. It had his eyes set right on the throats of the Ford Mustang. You know what? I really think that it did the trick. As a Mustang connoisseur at heart, I can genuinely and unbiasedly say that when the Genesis Coupe came out, it was on par, if not a little bit better than what the Mustang had to offer for a little bit less money. So it was an extremely attractive alternative to the traditional pony car. Hyundai just entered the enthusiast car market with a f***ing banger. But then nearly immediately after launch, we saw a huge uptick in those horsepowers from its competition. Mustang went full send with the 400 horsepower Coyote. The Camaro came on the block with 400 horsepower right out of the box. In the first years of the 370Z have depreciated to a really attractive price as well. And thus the glory that could have been the Hyundai Genesis Coupe was overshadowed by the oddly perfect timing of the muscle car comeback. And that shadow still casts over it to this day, which keeps prices low. So if you're looking for a car that presents a ton of value for just $16.20 per horsepower, you could adopt a Genesis Coupe 3.8 and give it the life that it deserves. And lastly, straight out of left field with an absolutely insane $15.80 per horsepower valuation, the R129 1989 to 2001 generation Mercedes-Benz 500 SL or SL500 is a insane car for the money. For starters, 315 horsepower comes directly out of a 5 liter V8 and is transferred to the rear wheels through an uber boring but equally as reliable automatic transmission. But it's not all boring. If you just push both pedals at the same time, it'll do a big old smoky burnout and keep up and potentially stomp on much more expensive cars than itself. Not only does this car meet and exceed my expectations in being the best horsepower per dollar I could find with a $5,000 limit, but it is historically one of the most expensive cars ever engineered. These cars started at $99,000 when they were new in 1989 with inflation that's over $180,000 in 2021. And now you can just go buy them for five grand. What? Sure, this thing isn't gonna win any autocross battles, but if you do pull out the incredibly complicated and unreliable hydraulic suspension, you can do it with that BC Racing coilover treatment, you now have yourself a slush box Mercedes-Benz branded Corvette killer with the most comfortable seats you've ever sat in, and most importantly, absolutely demolishes a Hellcat for the price of horsepower. It's not even close, and you guys thought I was crazy. But I don't think you could find anything to beat this for the money. And if you think you got something, share it with the freaking class. I read every single comment, and if you got something legit, I'll probably reply to it. Otherwise, let us know what you guys wanna see us cover next. Do you wanna up the price on this one a little bit and do another one of these? Or do you wanna do something a little different? Let us know. Otherwise, how are we supposed to know what you guys wanna see? Huh? Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the YouTube exclusive giveaway specials and new gear drops that get you entered to win a nasty race ready daily drivable Honda S2000 and $10,000 cash. What's not to love about that deal? Thank you guys so much for watching. Seriously, it means the world to me. I'm Sean, Sean B. Fi on Instagram. Thank you guys so much. I will see you later. Peace.